Eric by Sean Tan. Before I start the story, I'll tell you that a foreign exchange student is a student who wants to live in another country, maybe for six months or a year, so you can swap schools. So when I was a teenager, a Japanese girl came to live in our house with us, and she was called a foreign exchange student, and she was just curious about New Zealand. Some years ago, we had a foreign exchange student come to live with us. We found it very difficult to pronounce his name correctly, but he didn't mind. He just told him to call him Eric. We'd repainted the spare room, brought new rugs and furniture, and generally made sure everything um, would be comfortable for him. So I can't say why it was that Eric chose to sleep and study most of the time in the kitchen pantry. Must be a cultural thing, said Mum, as long as he's happy. We started storing food and kitchen things in other cupboards so we wouldn't disturb him. But sometimes I wondered if Eric was really happy. He was so polite that I'm sure he would not have told us if something bothered him. A few times I saw him through the pantry door gap, studying with silent intensity, and imagine what it might be like for him to be here in our country. Secretly, I'd been looking forward to having foreign visitors. I had so many things to show him. And for once, I was a fountain of interesting facts and opinions, an expert. Fortunately, Eric was actually curious and always had plenty of questions. However, they weren't the kind of questions I'd been expecting. Have a look at the pictures and you can see some of the questions. Most of the time I could only say, well, I'm not really sure or, well, that's just how it is. I didn't actually feel like an expert and I didn't feel very helpful. I had planned for us to go on a number of weekly excursions together as I was determined to show our visitor the best places in the city and its surroundings. I think Eric enjoyed the trip. Once again, it was really hard to know. Have a look at the pictures and you'll get an idea of where they went. Sean Tan doesn't always tell his stories through words. Most of the time, Eric seemed more interested in the small things he discovered on the ground. I might have found this a little exasperating, but I kept thinking about what Mum had said, about the cultural thing, and then I didn't mind so much. Nevertheless, none of us could help but be bewildered by the way Eric left our home. A sudden departure one early morning, with little more than a wave and a polite goodbye. It actually took us a while to realise he wasn't actually coming back. There was much speculation over dinner later that evening. Did Eric seem upset? Did he enjoy his stay? Would he ever want to hear from us again? An uncomfortable feeling hung in the air, like something unfinished or unresolved. It bothered us for hours, or at least until one of us discovered what was in the pantry. Go see for yourself. It's still there after all these years, thriving in the darkness. It's the first thing we show any new visitors in our house. Look at what our foreign exchange student left us, we tell them. It must be a cultural thing, says Mum. I just wonder what Sean Tan is telling us about differences and how we make assumptions as to what people want and what people need. I don't know. This has made me think, but I'm not sure what I'm thinking.